All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Was It Good, the podcast that reviews movies and TV shows. Today, we're taking a look at Bad Batch Season 2. I'm Ravi, joined by my two brothers, Arjuna, Krishna, and our producer, Michael. We did Nailed it. Nailed it. And we are Was It Good. We are Was It Good. Oh, no, no. We are Twas It Good. No, we, well, on, during the holiday season. Woo! Fair, so, fair. starting uh, In a July months. 4th all the way to the end of the year. Ooh. So I can put on my Christmas tree July 5th? Sure, go for it. <laughs> Heck yeah. Oh, dear God, you'd be a psycho. I was actually talking with someone uh, today, actually, about the holidays and how come, like, October, it's basically the year's done because October is the start of the big holiday season. Then it's Halloween. Yeah. 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 And then I took it one step further. And it's like, no, it's, it's also, like, come Memorial Day weekend, the summer's just basically done. So, essentially, we only really have one more month left of the year, and then it's done. <laughs> <laughs> it's just done. It's done. We're done. What, a, We're what, done. what a way to break that down. Yeah, Jesus. right? Weird. Second like, half of the year is very sad. year is over. If you're, yeah. yeah, it is. You know? Super. Like, May, June, graduations. July. It's 4th of July. August, my birthday uh, in particular. <laughs> <laughs> June's birthday. Okay. Well, we're not talking about the holidays. We're talking about a better, my birthday. A better holiday, and, and that is... This is a bad segue, but how a plan fails. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh. specifically, you know, if we're looking, obviously, uh, the taping of this podcast, the final two episodes of the, the second season of Bad Bash dropped. You know, big spoilers ahead. I think we should start off with, you know, R.I.P. Tech. R.I.P. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Spoilers. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it's very, it's very interesting. First of all, let's just get us out of the way. Do we believe Tech is actually dead? Yeah. Yeah. I think you he's think dead. he's actually dead. I think he's, I think he's, he's not dead. dead. And here's why. The cloning guy brings in the goggles. The cloning guy. His name is yeah, cl- his name is his, Royce Hemlock. His vo- his vo- his name is Voice Royce, Voice Hemrock. Royce? Royce Hemlock. <laughs> Who's Royce? Voice <laughs> by Royce. Jimmy Sims. Royce uh, Roy, some for some reason when Royce presented the batch with Tech's broken goggles. I just got the feeling that they found him and are nursing him back to health. And uh, they want him, they want the batch to feel like he's dead. They want us to feel like he's dead. And they planted enough stuff in this season to make it very plausible that he is dead. But it feels like a season three twist uh, in that Omega and Crosshair were going to stumble across Tech when they're trying to break out or something. I mean, they did it with Echo. So that's true. It's possible. Mm. I mean, what's the golden rule in Hollywood? If you don't if you, see them, if you don't see them, you don't see them die. If you don't see them physically die. Right. Plus, if they did then, it with Echo, it would be sort of an echo of that situation. That's true. But this one felt a little more <laughs> final, just the way that it was done. The finality of him saying, like, clones, you know, we don't follow orders, the Order 99 type of thing. Even <clears> the, like, way he said goodbye to. Um, the the pirate on Pabu, uh, which was yeah. like a non goodbye. It kind of it, it feels final. Um, it does. It feels final to me, and it also feels a little cheap if they kind of undo it because I think the show is about the batch, but it is also like Omega. Like it's Omega is the main character uh, in a lot of ways, and I think you need that character to have this like loss where. She wants everyone to be together and be fine. And she's still in denial. She's like, we can go back and help Tech. He's not dead. But, like, probably fell, like, a few thousand feet. Uh, I don't know if it was a thousand. I, I would guess, like, maybe 660. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. About that. Well, so, so, so Plausible a couple of, has arrived. <laughs> a, couple of count, a couple of things there, right? First of all, 669 feet is enough time for Tech to science his way out of death. <laughs> science second his of all, way out of death. A, a second of all, a point to Arjuna where his death could be final is that it does feel like we're about to bring Crosshair back into the fold. And I think I've, the rule is, I don't know if it's a real rule, but I heard rule. someone say, when you get rid of someone, you got to bring someone else back. Like you, you know, especially in a kid's show. Like it's, so... That would be a point toward tech actually being dead. Is that it feels like we're about to get crosshair back? Um, so, 
I don't know. It could go either way. That's why I asked the question because we didn't see him die on screen. Mm -hmm. uh, Arjuna's completely right. We do need to see Omega lose. Um, the thing is, though, she, it sound, it's, she's going to be really busy, it seems like, as soon as we start season three. And so it almost feels like Tech's death is going to get glossed over. And the other thing as well is, you know, I don't know if they've, you know, I, I don't know if, I don't know if Filoni can kill Tech. I just don't know if he can do it. We'll Filoni see. has a problem. And he that kills is, a lot of clones. He does. Sure, but they're generic clones. Everyone's a generic yeah. clone if you think about it. No, no not the batch. He gave them personality the and he gave them, you yeah. know, they have, he loves they have them. you know, individuality and everything and. He I, keeps bringing. He kept bringing Darth Maul back. I mean, I, I don't will, know. I, I just. I, I, I like. We I don't believe get, it. We won't get into it now. But like, my, my bold prediction does tie into tech. So you know, definitely stay till towards the end of the pod or skip ahead to hear. Don't steal mine. I mean, I'm I'm really calling it right now for the bold. I'm going first. No. Yes. I already. I practically already gave mine. No. no. Well, <laughs> well, you you started this out hot out the gate. Yeah. Usually we do our you one word impressions. So should we, we ever brought up? Yeah, we should all do death. it at the same time. Really make this a, a very difficult to follow along. I'll podcast. go first. Why would, do you get to go first? I don't know. I never get to go first. Actually, you know what? <laughs> Quick side note thing here. So parents were over and we were hanging out, and and dad says to me, he's like, "What? Why? What, do you do you not? This is dad to me, Ravi says. Dad says to me, like, do you do you not like Arjuna? And I'm like, well, what, what do you mean? Fuck? And he's like. Every time you guys do the was it good, you know, at the end of the pod, answering the question, he's like, you always ask Krishna first. <laughs> <laughs> and you never ask Arjuna. Oh, so dad's like, is that, is everything okay? And I was like, oh, I generally had no idea I did that. Like, whoops. That is very sensitive. I mean, I mean, I think it was more a joke than everything. everything. But like uh, going forward now, we're going to over overcorrect this. There we go. Nice. Yep. Was it Arjuna? Was it Arjuna? <laughs> nice. But yeah, anyway, Katrina, your one word impression uh, for, uh, I guess, are we going to do the whole season? Do you want to do just the finale? Mine's going to be both. Oh, wow. Beautiful. And it's going to be five. The Roman numeral five. So V. v. Because there's a very Empire Strikes Back oh. tone to this finale and to this season. Right? Yes, because they lose. They lose, right. right? This is very classic Star Wars episode. And the reveal at the end. Right, episode four. Yeah, right, right, right. Thank you, Christian, for explaining, for Krishna-splaining. <laughs> crease plain. <laughs> You're welcome. crease plain. Uh No, but yeah, it's like the first season is about the Batch kind of coming together and, and succeeding and even finding a common ground with Crosshair, right? Um Within within the show, like within the show, and, and being like, we may not be brothers, you know, fighting side by side, but we're still brothers, and there is a happy ish ending. Even even if like Camino does get blown up, uh, you know, they lose their home and whatever. At least the the group hey, when they're together, together, they're family. They're family. <laughs> it's all about family. Family. Uh, Olive Garden. <laughs> Eat fresh. You guys want to go to Olive Garden sometime? I have a coupon actually. I could go Wait, for really? some breadsticks. I've got like a like a gift card. Like I think it's enough to cover the unlimited breadstick and salad thing. So if you guys want to go for that, just mm. let me know. Oh. What do you, the viewer, think of Olive Garden? Let us know. We Delicious are not sponsored by Olive gross. Garden. Not yet. Passable or gross. You tell us. Uh <laughs> but <laughs> pass or gas. <laughs> and should we get a sponsorship from them? Not anymore. Uh, but yeah, it is a full circle moment because right. the, the batch loses. You know, they, they lose one of their own. They lose they, their you know, Omega gets captured. They're kind of like in this limbo land. Sid, who's been their confidant for a long time, really turns them in. Uh, and this season's a, a lot of it's about loss, right? Like there's an arc where they lose the Marauder. There are multiple, there are arcs. There's the arc with Coruscant where they still can't get their rights as clones. They, they lose Echo. They lose right. They lose Echo for a little bit. He was on. So. He was taking a vacation. Yeah, he was hanging out <laughs> yeah. with Rex. Yeah. A he Rex was vacation. Hanging out with Rex. Wow. What the fuck? <laughs> They're well, that would be obviously. a now that would be a twist. <laughs> I don't even know. What do you, anyway? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got that. Push he's through. got the cyborg on. Push you know? through. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so like it, it really echoes. I think five in. Um, a lot of ways with the ending and, and kind of pushing them down for them maybe to rise back up in the in the next season um, of Bad Batch. If there is a next season. I don't know if it's been confirmed for season three yet. Well, I can tell you this. 
There is a Dave Filoni animation panel at Celebration in a couple of weeks. That I did see that. So I would assume that assume. they won't show anything <laughs> or even talk about <laughs> a season cool three. Enough. There's also you an Ahsoka panel. Apparently there won't be a trailer or a release date or anything from the show. They're just going to reminisce about Ahsoka's previous <laughs> appearance. I was going to say <laughs> they're, they're, they're announcing Ahsoka is animated now. Yeah, they scrapped the Back whole thing. to yep. animation. Hand drawn. <laughs> oh, my God. They're like, let's really go with the Disney magic. The Disney roots. Yeah. And hand draw this shit. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going to go with five. Nice. Yeah. Good, also, Betrayal, good. right? Sid is kind of the Lando a little bit. Yeah. In, uh, so, also, oh, then does that mean you think she'll have a redemption piece and fly the Millennium Falcon on Hans' uh, clothes? No. <laughs> the yes. next season? No. Damn, Arjuna, that's a, that's probably your best one word impression ever. Like, uh, yeah, no. Can we well get done. the clapping sound effect, please? I, I'm not even. I'm not. I'm, that probably sounds sarcastic too. I'm dead serious. That was great. I never. I didn't. I didn't make all those connections myself. So. Connective tissue. And that's why we watched the pod. Don't ever do that again. Stop that. Stop it. This is a an ASMR. ASMR. You're ruining your one word impression. I've V. <laughs> I've muted out him. A compound V. Oh, you have muted him? <laughs> oh. I heard a, a really quiet meow. <laughs> he said, oh. oh. <laughs> it's not like a meow. How did you get a meow from an O? Meow. Oh. Um, no. Uh, Christian, your one word impression? My, mine's going to be basic. It's going to be It's going to be tech. Because uh, I still, I still uh, stand and maintain. Uh, my qualifier was crosshair. He's got to be in a bunch of these episodes. And my MVP for the season is still Crosshair. But I'm going to give Tech the co-MVP award. Yes. They are going to win this award together. Um, I th- So I thought season two was a lot better than season one. Whoa. I think, a lo- I think a lot of the reason why is because they introduced more conflict within the batch. And Tech was a significant part of, significant source of that conflict. And... It's a shame. Here's the other, I guess, reason as well why I would want Tech to be alive. It's a shame that if the only reason they made Tech more interesting is is so that he could have a more impactful death, that's not a good enough reason, in my opinion, to invest more in a character. You should be doing that level of investment in all your characters for good storytelling, right? If the only reason that they decided to make Tech better cool and give him some interesting conflict was just to kill him off and have you feel something then that's not good that being said i enjoyed what they did um and i thought it was an extremely strong season after a shaky start Mm. and uh i think tech yeah the dark side episode didn't move you (laughs) which dark do you mean with the the clones and pod racing Oh, the fake pod racing. With the parade. guy, the guy who was going Dark against side. Sid that looked just like Dark Side from DC. That's right. Yep. The treasure hunting episode. Which now, which is. now in context, the reason for that episode is to show that like Sid actually can't be trusted, right? Right. Because that's like the big warning that he gives throughout, and then like, guess what? Oh, that's a good Sid's one. Given. Sid is not cool. It, it's interesting. Like, if these epi- if these two episodes didn't happen or go the way they went, I probably would be bashing the season a lot more. Yeah. Because, yeah, it does feel like a lot of these episodes early in the season were just filler. I, I mean, think the second half was build up way stronger than like, the first half. Yes, definitely. I definitely. think once you kind of hit the Coruscant arc, uh, that Coruscant arc I thought was really That's excellent. the best piece by far of the entire uh, thing. I thought that piece was, like, really excellent, very much, like, political Star Wars right. type of thing. You know, if you've been watching The Mandalorian uh, these last few weeks, you know, Coruscant is the new Tatooine. Uh, everybody's there. It's ha- you know makes more sense. It does. It's you know, capital, it's like right? the capital of the, of yeah. the uh, empire and the and, and stuff that's going on. So. Fun fact: the new uh, video game Jedi Survivor, big piece of it takes place on Coruscant. Okay, so the, <laughs> the Coruscant, the movie is that is that what we're getting? Like, I'm kidding. I don't we, actually know if that's true. But there is there the are shots. The franchise. There are shots of uh, uh, Cal on Coruscant. So I don't know how long you're there, but you're there. So, so let me get this straight. Mm-hmm. With these Star Wars characters, the Star they're Wars. like so, like the clones, right? Like the Batch and the clones are like, we need to hide. So where should we go? The capital, <laughs> the Jedi, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, we we need to hide. Where should we go? The capital. But remember, Coruscant's <laughs> a massive city, and there is a there is like 
I think it has like a trillion people, right? Something like that. But there's also like hiding in plain sight. Like yeah. that is a thing. If it's, a, if it's the densest part of the galaxy. galaxy, it'd be like hiding a needle in a haystack. Right. It's I, technically I not. Somebody did the numbers and a trillion people is not nearly Possible. as packed as a lot of the major cities in the world today. It's actually spar- more sparsely packed than some of them. Curacao. What? Yeah, Curacao. But it would have to have like a hundred trillion to oh, make. to make yeah oh based on like the size and yeah so per buildings. square mile Population yeah pop density it's like two thousand people per square mile and I think they said Manila oh. is like upwards around six thousand right now what if they what if they're not including um, clones and droids in their population count because well that's going oh, off of the Mandalorian where they said a trillion permanent residents. So it could be that they have 99 trillion non-permanent residents, <laughs> which is where we're headed with Airbnb and stuff. So maybe we could learn from Coruscant. Do you I, think Airbnb so, is so according thriving? to Wikipedia, which, oh. you know, I don't know how much to trust it. It says Coruscant's population is 2 trillion. 2 trillion. Ooh. We getting some um, conflicting so, numbers. Yeah, that yeah. is. Is this wait, is it Wikipedia or Wikipedia? Uh, this is Wikipedia. Oh, then what does, I, oh, I, I would trust what Wikipedia. Wikipedia say. Coruscant was created by Timothy Zahn, who is uh, an author yeah, he's from the, Expanded Universe. Right. He's the um, blue guy, uh, Thrawn guy. Yeah, he created, yeah, he created Thrawn, he created but he, apparently Thrawn, he created Coruscant, too. You know, uh, Christian has a signed book from him, and mm-hmm. I have an awkward Thank photo you. of me with my arm doing the, sh- the hovering thing. Nice. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> He was really nice. I was just super awkward. So does that Don't mean touch the talent. If this is like if Timothy Zahn is the father of Coruscant and he's the father of Thrawn, does this mean Coruscant and Thrawn are therefore brothers? Cora Thrawn. Correct. Just like how the yes. clone engineer is Omega's sister. The same logic. We'll get there. <laughs> and Omega is actually a clone of the Emperor. And Grogu is a clone of... Luke Skywalker. Jar Jar Binks. Binks. <laughs> Why go. did you both say that? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> Grogu is Yoda back in time, sent forward. Boom. Oh, oh God. And Picard is they on better the not do USS it. Voyager. <laughs> Wait, currently? In the no. show? Oh. Uh, anyway, my one word. Let's get back on track here. My one word impression <laughs> is going to be clones. <laughs> nice. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, uh, yeah. no, I'm being serious, actually. Because, again, <laughs> while the show... Uh, you know, basically season one takes place right after Order 66. And now we're like, I think a year or two or something after that or sometime, however many fucking rotations equal a year. We're definitely some time. Yeah. We'll get to it because there's some significant cameos in this two-part finale that actually give us a better a idea. time placer right. of where we are pre- between three and four. But what's also cool with the show is like, why we are following or our main point or POV is the Bad Batch and Omega. We are still seeing what's happening with other clones. What's, what happened to Cody, right? What's going on with Rex? What's happening to the clone population um, at large? And it's, inter- it's, you know, a lot of people have complained about the political side of Star Wars. I mean, remember back in, for episodes one and two, it was like, why are we watching and Star three. Wars? Yeah, and three. Why are we watching Star Wars, the politics show? But like Star Wars has always been, I think, at its peak is is that stuff. But again, it's nice to see with the clones, like what's happening and 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 how it looks like we're we're finally getting a real answers to why are there no clones in four, five, and six. I think it's because they're gonna they keep wipe falling them out. downstairs. Oh, I think they're gonna I go a, into hiding. I have a I have a prediction now. Oh, let's On pa, boom. We'll get it to our bold prediction. Oh, bold prediction. I mean, I don't know if you guys did see. Uh, I think it was the Screen Rant article I was reading today. Uh, they referenced that there was rumored that Bad Batch potentially is leading up to an all-out clone uprising war, like a secondary war that's just not really ever talked about. And I think that's where we will potentially see them all go or whatever. The the one question, though, as I bring up clones, one question I have that I couldn't, that hasn't been made clear to me, um, for Jimmy's, uh, I'm going to call him Jimmy. It's, it's uh, Royce Hemlock. For Hemlock's research facility on the mountaintop. In the mountain. Those commandos, are those clones? No. They are just regular conscripted soldier, yeah. foot soldiers. So I think part of the arcs that you see throughout this as time is going by is, you know, basically the majority of the troopers left are stormtroopers, stormtroopers. at this point. And you, 
part of the way you can tell is actually uh, the batch when they shoot to kill. They're killing. Them. They're killing stormtroopers right. when they're stunning. They're stunning uh, clones. Right. And in these later episodes, they are full on killing. They use some stun yeah. grenades on occasion. Yeah, but that's more of like that's all they have. How do they know? <laughs> yeah, uh, how do they I think know? it's like a spidey sense. Actually, my I don't own <laughs> thing is I can sense you, brother. <laughs> Hello, brother. <laughs> I, you know, there uh, might be something to the whole spidey sense thing because Crosshair, when he's breaking out, kills those two or three guards instantly, but stuns the scientists. So you wonder if there's an innate um, sense there that he knows that they're one related. of us. Yeah. Yeah. So but maybe the there, there might be something, something actually to that. that. Yeah. You know, to be able to like sense friend or foe. It is also wild. Like, can we, let's let's talk about the empire's um, logic for a second. Uh, so, <laughs> so yes. uh, you have these the species. They're they're the greatest cloners in the world. You're the emperor, and you're working on some research project, and you let your military wipe pretty much all of them out. Okay, okay, um, but they're the greatest in the galaxy, and you're just gonna keep a handful alive. And hope they all cooperate. Ravi, have you ever heard of Got something it. called the Got Republican it. Party of the United States of America? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, boy. I yes. can't wait to see where this is going. <laughs> Please continue. Uh, uh, have you ever heard of, like, flawed logic <laughs> within yes. a political atmosphere? Sure. <laughs> Very realistic. I guess so. I guess so. Uh, yeah, it's actually not as far-fetched as you would think. That's crazy. Anyway, when you put it that way. Anyway, interesting. <laughs> Maybe the emperor is uh, not all that smart. I, I will. I would say, you know, just to answer some of Ravi's ideas, because Palpatine is supposed to be pretty smart <laughs> and forward thinking. Perhaps he wanted to eliminate the Kaminoans to prevent them from creating a rival army for re- like rebels or rebellions. I mean, that, uh, yeah, so that he thought maybe sense. it was safer just to I get rid of it. them and then control control as much of the original source as he could yeah it's also like a business tactic right like if you outsource um something (laughs) and then you want to bring it internal right which is a lot of what you see with the empire they want to bring stuff internal right in terms of stuff that they can control and even though they even though palpatine was the one right that like orchestrated the creation of the clone army he wanted to bring it internal he didn't want the kaminoans who have the ability now to create this like like Christian said, to be able to sell this off or utilize it with anyone else or anything else. So it's like, how do we do that? We destroy the planet. We take the few people remaining. We try and create our own thing. Yeah, we hide it. And I think you, in season one, right, like uh, um, Royce Hemlock is, you know, talks to the Kaminoan scientist and she's like, what the Emperor wants isn't possible. And you hear some of those conversations in season one where they're also working on this type of, that same type of thing for Palpatine they must have come back to him and been like, yeah, we're not going to, like, this is impossible. We're not going to do this. And this is his way of pressuring them, too. Where he's True. like, I killed all of you. You know, I killed, I killed your planet, essentially. So, like, if you want to go the way of them and be extinct, like, now you need to do this or else. And, like, that's the way he thinks. And that's his intimidating persona. Like, you even see it in the Coruscant arc in the middle of the, sh- the season, right? Where the, 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 you know, the beginning of the Rebel Alliance, the senators that are in there, are really getting, like, a good head of steam to kind of support the clone troopers. And then all of a sudden Palpatine comes in, right. And he flips the situation. Right. He's he like, changes the narrative. Yeah. He's like, yeah. okay, well I'm caught, right? Like, Oh, well, this rogue guy is the guy that destroyed everything. Camino. But he's like, but look, he ordered the clones to do it. And like, this shows how bad it is. So like, we need to get rid of clones. So like, he's always able to kind of get his way. And right. Manipulate. So that was a, that was a great line too. An important line by Moff Tarkin, I think, where he said, under the leadership of the Jedi, yep. he found the clones' unpredictability uh, concerning. And so you would think that, you know, if Palpatine's aware of that, of that element of the Jedi being able to influence the clones and make, allow the clones to be more unique than just mindless drones, uh, you know, perhaps he's thinking as well, the Kaminoans while well, they're good at cloning, they're not cloning the way that I want them to clone. Like that's something in their, the way they do it, which has this inherent flaw where if their clones come into contact with Jedi or maybe just, I don't know, good people, they exhibit 
uh, elements that you can't control. So yeah, I guess it's, it's always easier easier as well to control people that have something to lose. Clones were bred just for war. Right. Don't exactly have anything to live for once the war's over. Plus, if you use real people, then you really diminish the population that can rise up against you. Population control. Well, it also sounds like they want to wipe out a bunch of people because um, the, the the Royce Hemlock was saying how they could build out a pure, yeah. better race or whatever. Uh, and I think yeah. we've, we've had this conversation before, too, of like the switch from clones to stormtroopers. There's something more powerful about radicalizing people. Right. right. In terms of like... You're getting them to buy. We talk about this on Attack on Titan, right? With the um, Jaegerists, well, yeah, with the Jaegerists and the Marleans, and like using you like using people and radicalizing them with ide- ideologies and how powerful that can be, right? And I think that's also part of this switch where it's like we can build an army, right? We can basically order it on Amazon, <laughs> or like we can build it ourselves, where right. we can we can go door to door and we can convince you, like, hey, like sign up and be for the Empire, because that also helps with the lack of uprising too, where it's like we're radicalizing people and they're going to want to do this and they're going to rat out other people. Yeah. They're going to radicalize their family, their friends. And it's just the, uh, it kind of, sp- it spreads a little easier than just like, yep. Well, I bought like, I bought that one and that one and that one, but it's not guaranteed. It's you not guaranteed. You can, I mean, it is better to clone them. I don't know why they're not cloning. What you get one radical person, clone them. That clone will be <laughs> radical too. Cause it's a clone. But but clearly not right because the the clones show their own personality. I don't know. I've never seen. The so they're not. Well, oh well, there you go. <laughs> so that's what we're talking. Yeah. Well, that's what we're yeah. talking about. We're I'm talking about of like cloning the, in general. Just the idea of it. Yeah, I, I think I think that's why Palpatine goes with the cloning method in the prequel trilogy because he's like, I can create this massive army right. that could come out of nowhere, and everyone's going to trust it what he gets and then that helps him lead the uprising against the Jedi mm-hmm. but I think that individuality the post the post else. order 66 yeah like everything that we've seen where the clones more and more clones are going rogue right that's the reason Palpatine's like clone you know that's got to be part of the reason yep. he's like clones are good but I think as well it's like if I can radicalize people there's an, an element of fear there and intimidation like I these people under my control do what I say is far more powerful, I think, than just having a clone do the dirty work for you. Right. Especially this, when they're viewed within this universe as mm-hmm. second class citizens or not even people, right? Right. They're property. Right. Uh, they actually use that word, which is yeah. disturbing. Yeah. That's what, uh, what uh, Jimmy Smith says. I find it interesting that the clones are inconsistent. That's, is that bad storytelling? No, or no, it's good. It's individuality. Because, because it's they're, showing that they're showing that just like people, like right. they yeah. are taking on traits of people because they are people. Right. You clone people, at the end of the day, at least in the context of this show or this universe. Ooh, yeah. I like that qualifier. So, because like, yeah, are clones people? Yeah, and this this Dave Filoni, Dave Filoni has made it his mission from the Clone Wars, yeah, so um, to the you. present to 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 tell you. To show you that yes, they are people. Oh, yeah, because they don't the the uh, well, that's Filoni's idea. Learman, they don't do the traditional idea of cloning in the sense that a clone has the exact or like the memories or whatever of like the donor. They do it along the ideas of the clone is gets the physical attributes and like the ability, um, like some abilities of the other person, but they're still like a blank slate in terms of. Memories and they still grow up and have they their still own have, experiences. Yeah, exactly. So they yeah. grow up, but I mean, yes. I guess I would argue that we are just our physical makeup, and if we're identical physically and we're put through the exact same things, we'll turn out exactly the same way we do. No, that's not how they play that. That's not how they do it. That's yeah. a little. Right. It's, well, different. it's science fiction. So. No, <laughs> Star Wars is real. Camera unknowns, <laughs> but they, but Learman, they've already proven though. With like identical uh, uh, identical twins, that is like fifty fifty. It depends. Yeah, and well, that's why I said if you're put through the same things, if you have the same genetic makeup, and you're put through the same things, it's impossible to put the same two people through the same. Yeah, it's exact exact different yeah. things. Yeah, that, that's Unless literally you're conjoined impossible. and do these. You things. could use VR. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. But I mean, I don't know. This is an imaginary technology. <laughs> 
Yeah. I, I don't know Correct. what the Cam announced. Well, no, can do. no. We, we cloned Palpatine that sheep once. Palpatine Dolly. came back exactly how he was. Maybe with a some dick. banged up Somehow fingers. Somehow, Palpatine. But, that's, the, but that, that's what we're saying, though. He's trying to perfect the cloning to make it as controlled as possible. And the way the Kaminoans were doing it with the clones, clearly it isn't. Uh, it actually even leads more credence into this whole, what the story they're trying to tell. Well, then, um, so I'm going to say Palpatine did the right thing. If the Kaminoans aren't going to clone perfect For his clones, purposes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this, what that, other that, purposes? Yeah. that's why he was emperor for 30 plus years. Yeah. Well, like 28. Oh, I'm sorry. Hashtag <laughs> Palpatine was right. <laughs> yeah, you got to get the oh, dates and times right. Well, you don't know about Star right, Wars, weird. Effective for his brief reign. He had his brief reign. I yeah. mean, old wrinkly raisin. Speaking of old wrinkly raisins, Moff Tarkin. <laughs> mm. Moff the Tarkin man. with his, his super cameo table. The, 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 yeah, besides that, though, the man that ha, uh, has the worst aging in the Star Wars universe next to Obi-Wan <laughs> Kenobi. Literally had brown, silky smooth skin two years ago. Well, clearly all the stress <laughs> that he's been through, his bases are getting blown up, his science officers are dying, have failed projects. You know? Does he seem like the type of individual that cares about any of that? I bet he has severe imposter syndrome. Oh, Maybe. probably. But he like, also you has don't to be... work with the Emperor, right? Like, that's going to be stress level 100. <laughs> sure, but like, the way he's presented in episode four... At, at his table and v- with Vader, Vader seemed more subservient to him as yeah. opposed to the yeah. other sure. way around. Sure. Yeah. So I would imagine there's a level of mutual whatever between Tarkin and the Emperor. I'm sure he still fears him or whatever, but compared to like other people in the Empire, like Krennic, for example. Yeah. Um, well, you do you you have heard the thing too. It's like if you're a evil bad person, you probably don't age that great. And that's why I look wonderful. That's why I look like I'm 50. Mm. You say are are you evil? <laughs> the yeah. true dark power. He's of dang the nasty evil. Is Darth. Darth but yeah, so Tar- so Tarkin I've seen the the second to last episode was having a little uh tea party with his uh science, dickhead friends. His science officers all, almost all of those characters we've seen in multiple Star Wars. So it was Krennic was there and um it was actually kind of funny because you see him in one shot and then they go back to him a couple of times. And I think it's one of the last shots of Krennic and he finally speaks. And it's Ben Mendelsohn. They actually yeah. got him back for that one. But like the couple of times they looked at him, you thought he was about to speak and he doesn't yeah, speak. Like, it was like, what, why what are you tease? teasing? Stop teasing. And you're like, <laughs> we know this is Kren- and it's Commander Krennic. Commander, right. He isn't the director yet. He's not there. Um, the, got his promotion. The, old, the one old fuck from Clone Wars and Andor, Colonel... Uh, Yularen. Yularen was there. And then... A couple of the other ones I'm not super familiar with. There was with. just one other guy at the table. I thought there was the longer hair. Oh, that's right. The I don't one know who that was. The accent. Yeah. Not sure also who a is. clone. <laughs> no. And then obviously there was also Hemlock was there. Yep. And they're all just talking about their various projects. <laughs> their Operation <prototype>. Stardust. <laughs> yeah. And right? then, yeah, the one of the last thing is Kremit, Krem, not Krem, Ma, Tarkin is asking... Krennic. Krennic. Hey, tell us about your little Stardust project. Yeah. And it's cool because, uh, you know, uh, in the base, the guy who blows it up and is responsible for, like, tech's death and the mission kind of failing is that, is that you know, that guy who is cameo and everything these days. Saw, Saw Guerrera. Guerrera. Was that Forrest Whitaker no. is on the voice? No, because oh, okay. I think it's the guy who did the voice in the Clone, Clone Wars. Wars yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the makes the younger sense. version. This uh, is the one that has a logical age. <laughs> right. Uh <laughs> But it's interesting, right? Because we obviously saw saw in season one of Bad Batch, um, in the early episodes when he kind of teams up with them, and so now this is saw a little bit later, becoming more radicalized again, um, and he fucks them over, yeah, pretty bad, big time. I have to wonder: Do you think next season, like, I'm sure it has to come up in some some capacity, like Saw and and his his uh you know initial fuck up with yeah. the attack and everything. I mean, he won't care though. No, I mean, it's for the cause. Yeah, it's for the cause. He's like, I'll for kill everybody. Cause. His logic is flawed, but, like, you know. He, uh, flawed Guerrero. He does, he does what he, he, does, what <laughs> he does. But you, you, you do remember, though, like, Saw's flaws in every... Saw's flaws. Saw's uh, flaws. It's a new uh, floss. Um, <laughs> Saw's flaws. Saw's flaws. Saw's flaws. Saw's flaws. Say that ten times. Oh. 
Uh, but remember, <laughs> I, thought that, his, I thought that was the last. His radicalization is is uh, Anakin's fault. Yeah. Because Anakin and Ahsoka and, and the merry batch of clones, right, help them to they are they they weaponize them teach them and then there is like a line or something where like anakin's like take whatever you need to take to to win and do whatever so yeah it's all about winning so it's all vader's fault really do you think filoni's gonna make ahsoka the balance to the force that the chosen one was supposed to bring Mm -hmm. that's the feel we're not talking ahsoka (laughs) (laughs) oh because i had mentioned Ahsoka. okay uh probably or something, yep. I don't know. I think, yeah. He's, he's, that's the way he's, he's playing it. Whether the rest of Disney goes along with it, it's probably a different question. What an ego. I think he's going to do what he's done with his lovely live action shows. Like, the first season will have a lot of Ahsoka, but the second season will be like half the season with her. Well, we only, it's only, <laughs> we only know that there's one season. We don't know anything beyond I that. I guess that's true. Well, they did change it from limited series to season one. Oh, they the did? Li- yeah, in the listing. So oh. it's like it's going to be a thirteen season. season show. Well, to be Ooh. fair though, the th- are you talking about the listing on Disney Plus? Uh, I think so. I well, just like their list of shows. I don't uh, know. Because I don't know the only thing. reason I bring that up is because like a couple of the Marvel shows that were slated for like various like fall winter are now now stating coming soon. So coming soon can mean any time. Basically. <laughs> From now until the end of time. It's a, it's a great marker to put, yeah. I had a quick Coming question. Soon. Is a moff higher ranked than a director? Mm-hmm. Or where does the moff... The moffs basically, end? like, own... They're bas- they bas- It's basically Palpatine and then a moff of some sort, and then everybody else. So there's moff Tarkin and there's moff Gideon. Those right. are the two named moffs. That there's a know. couple other... There's the moff... <laughs> there's the moff... Mothman! <laughs> so when, you know... Uh, Battlefront 2, the story. Oh, right, yeah. There's that Moth oh, guy. Yeah. Moth Battlefront. <laughs> yeah. Stop. Is it him? I don't Moth. think it's Yulurin, but that may, maybe, I don't know. Well, he's also an Andor. He's, yeah, he's right, but I don't know if he the... survives all the way through to episode 6. I mean, he's pretty old by the time Andor comes. So. This is true. true. Just because he has white hair doesn't mean he's like super old. Some people naturally dye their hair white. Reasons. Yeah, I love dyeing my hair white. Uh, so there, there are really are only two or three named moths in that the were, universe. Oh, wow. Yeah. I had no idea. I mean, idea. there might be more. We just There's probably more. Probably, there are probably definitely more. Moth yeah, Thrawn? Like, really. No. no. Admiral. Admiral. Uh, he's yeah. military. <clears throat> yeah, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Sorry for the side side tangent. I was just super curious about a, what a moth was. There is so moth in a... Uh, uh, in, at least in Legends, there was a Council of Moths. Ooh. I know. <laughs> can't see. The Council of Moths. I'm trying to see if there's a list like of, a, like... I, are you doing a little moth diving? Trying to find, like... Named who are all the moths. Named moths? Moths of the Galactic Empire. <laughs> I, no, I'm not even going to try. These are very complicated. Like, Rider. Moth Rider. Oh. Azadi. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just uh, yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> we don't really know. <laughs> like many things in Star Wars, it just yeah. is. Yeah, like mm. is Tech still alive or not, or is he just Tech support now? <laughs> oh God! Whoa! <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, who knows? An idea. <laughs> oh wait, so Ryder Azadi is actually one of the leaders of the. Lothal resistant group, but he was Moff Rider of Lothal in uh, Rebels. Oh. He's the older guy that helps Ezra uh, and and the crew of the Ghost. Oh, that so guy. it's another Moff, but he left the Empire, obviously. Ooh, a rogue Moff. Maybe he's a double agent. He moffed off. Maybe he's gonna be yeah. in Ahsoka. Pulls off her mask, and it's just Moff Rider Asadi. <clears throat> let's let's get into the big uh the big twist of the season mm. the last scene why yeah. did they keep the shot pulling out for about 15 seconds <laughs> i think the <laughs> to animators really let it sink know, in. were just like look at all the pretty buildings much, and they're just like well we shouldn't cut this we've rendered it now do you think they use blender for this show <laughs> uh i wouldn't be surprised at some aspects of it why not uh, Blender the, Cinema 4D. There, the 
the big reveal obviously is that uh, the clone engineer is Omega's sister. Yes. They is have the same clone? accent. That's how we know they're connected. Do we know if they're voiced by the same individual? Um, Did anyone stick around for the post credit scenes? I didn't stick around. I would assume maybe. Because the, the voice actress for Omega is an adult. Oh, there you go. I feel like it, it probably might be, is the same. Be easier for them to do an adult. It's cheap. It's cheaper. It's cheaper to have. It I the mean, same, all so. the batch is the same voice. Yeah. What? <laughs> so what? <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> Some people might think they're different. They're, they're pretty varied voices. That's true. That's true. For the batch in particular, obviously, yeah, like in Clone Wars, they're all job. pretty much the same. <laughs> hmm. um, yeah. But yeah, but I think yeah, I, I was shocked by that twist. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't see it coming. And I feel dumb that I didn't, but I'm happy that I didn't because I was like, truly, oh, what a way to end the season. Like, holy cow. Also, I like, explained like the earlier scenes with her and Crosshair. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it makes you wonder. It's like, how how does she exist and how does she come into the employ of the Empire? There's a, there's a whole story there that I'm sure we're going to get in season three. Yeah. Um, I mean, but Roy- yeah, I was truly shocked. Royce is a fairly like sinister character that we know little about um and i think there's definitely some connections there i know for like having watched mandalorian we had that like recent episode about all about dr pershing right yeah who was part of like this group this group right like he's he's basically a later part of this group like 30 years later um i kept waiting for dr pershing to come into the Bad Batch, and I had to keep reminding myself, I'm like, it's not the same timeline or it's not the same time period. Yeah, but I was yeah, like, it just felt so years. natural. I'm like, Doctor Pershing is going to show up because it's yeah. the same freaking process. Does that mean Jimmy, um, thirty Jimmy years Simpson? apart, will show up in one of these? Oh my god, lose my mind. I mean, he's going to be like, how is it this jackass a, of a he's character not like, survived he's not that like, long? He's not like you know, he's not Matt Damon or anything, yeah, right. but like, he's not like a voice actor he's like a he's more of a live action actor right he's so established it yeah. does feel it's it's an interesting casting to cast like a a, a you know a, a, a name like that for this character who might just appear in like who's only appeared in these last few episodes of season two i i guess you assume will be a big part of season three mm-hmm. but potentially could they be double casting now for no, some no, of no. these characters it, to appear in live actions like the like a Mandalorian, like in Ahsoka, like some of these other shows, these live. You know who they? You know who they would cast as um, Hemlock in the Mandalorian? Ooh, Ed Harris. <laughs> wow, that was wow, oh, because wow. of Westworld. I see. Uh, <laughs> but also, <laughs> voice voice acting is a pretty sweet gig. I, no, it I is. Mean, like, it's, it's very possible Simpson was just like, I just sit in my closet and say a few lines, and yeah. I get a hundred thousand or whatever they. It's pay true, me. and Bad Batch does have some like Rhea Perlman does mm-hmm. Sid, Wanda Sykes does the the pirate lady on Pabu. Fee, uh, Fee, Pabu, right. uh, Pabu, Pabu. You know. <laughs> I'm Baba Frick <laughs> on Pabu. <laughs> Oh Welcome God. to Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars. I mean, it like. is space Muppets after all. Yeah, that's true. So, like, yeah, I mean, that is that is a good point. There are a lot of big, actual, like, outside of the core characters, which is just two actors doing a bulk of these. Like, they they have, <laughs> I guess, they have leftover money because of that to to pay a little <laughs> bit more for some. Of the oh, that's kind of that's kind of good. Yeah. Name. I mean, he did a great, fantastic job on the voice. Like, it's creepy. Um, I, I didn't look it up. But I was like, this Hemlock guy is very sinister. And not just in character, but like the way he sounds and stuff. Yeah. So they did a great job. Uh, also, like the animation for this season, I mean, you expect it to get better. and But this is the best it's ever been by like by a lot. Like maybe with the exception of um, the Clone Wars at last season uh, with uh, Ahsoka and Darth Maul and all that. With the exception of that, it was really that last season has some extremely cinematic shots, uh, like especially like when Omega is waking up after the fall. Oh, that, so Wreck is like yeah. carrying her, and you get a first person view of her like in and out, and they're blasting their way through the ship. I was like, this is incredibly well done for no, a children's the animated. The cinematography show. in that those last two episodes, like that last episode in particular with the so dangling train car mm-hmm. and everything, I thought was really particularly like a beautiful set piece. Uh, and well done and just the camera angles like how they're able to get the camera in there and everything <laughs> I thought was really cool I'd love to know Animation. like what film bureau they had to work with on that planet yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> was it like Tarkin's film bureau? Do you think the actors who play the Batch, like, do you think they're like Tom Cruise and they did their own stunts? I'd hope so. <laughs> like, they have the training. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. You hope they do. I have yeah. some bad news for you all. <laughs> don't ruin this for us. Oh, Michael, don't say it. I have to go soon. <laughs> don't ruin this. <laughs> let's, oh, uh, let, let's, let's play the fun game of revisiting our bull predictions. We have a few sets. We of have bull a cute. Yeah, we have a couple of sets. So obviously, we've done. This is season two of Bad Batch. We knew about this uh, all the way back. We knew this season was coming all the way back when we did our, our podcast on the season one of, of of Bad Batch, and we had some predictions of what would happen. You know, in season, in season two as a whole, and then we did do a podcast on the start of this season, and we did some predictions for what we think would happen. <laughs> Based on, Based on that. Start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of combine a little of these things. Oh. So we'll start with Christian. So Christian's bold prediction for season two before season two aired, right? So he had no knowledge of, of, of what was to come. He said, <clears throat> we will see prototype Snoke. We won't know it's Snoke. It's Omega. And and that's, yeah, that's that. that. Yeah. Uh, well, I think a lot of happen. these are typed... Yes, incorrectly, which is fine. We're not going to read what I'm assuming that people would go through and clean it. it. (laughs) That's fine. That's why I can can stop myself. Anyway, um, it's possible we did see a Snoke in in that last scene. Yes, but highly unlikely. Because well, we'll see when we get to our new bold predictions. Right. So then, that's Christian's bold prediction before seeing anything. Then after Christian watched the first two episodes of this season, was well, first like three, four, first three or whatever, four, five, four, we maybe did the first five, five, five. Yeah, Christian said, <laughs> "Omega's DNA is pivotal to Snoke and Palpatine being cloned." Yeah, uh, honestly, I, uh, I, th- I think me? I think uh, that's why. Why else do they want her so bad? <laughs> well, so that they could force, um, yeah. For force the clone scientists, yeah, the, to, commun- the Kaminoan scientists, oh, um, Lala right. Null, yeah, something like that. That yeah. was why. To for- yeah, I don't think her DNA is actually important in terms. Well, of... Well, they don't. They haven't realized it yet. Sure, Maybe. sure, 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 sure. Yeah, sure. Let's go with that. I don't sure. Know. Uh, so, Christian, you get no points. I think I get a hundred percent. I nailed both of those perfectly. I mean, her DNA <laughs> has been pivotal before, right? Like Fennec is. Hunting her down for the Empire because again the Kaminoans wanted her, wanted her for something, but right. I think it's just because she has an attachment to her. Oh, but then I guess like yeah, maybe there is. Well, an they attachment. had mentioned the genetic code. Remember, sure. like she has the pure genetic code, right? With her, much like Boba Fett, right? Yeah, I think that's still a, a, something to tug on there. Um, <clears throat> okay, mine. For from you know from season one looking at season two was uh, Michael forgot to type this part. Sorry me. So I don't remember what my bold overall That's prediction bold that Michael would forget to type. Yeah, this part. I, I called that. Wow, wow. good. Um, <laughs> well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, but for the season in general, after we saw the first five, I said, <laughs> "Wow, Omega is captured by the Empire." And she sees an unconscious Grogu in the finale. You like well, almost got 50%. it besides one word. Grogu. If you put like crosshair, yep, I would have if you had put like other well, 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 clones. What if Grogu's in one of those tanks? That's true. Or what if Grogu is crosshairs? <laughs> <laughs> or what if that Omega would be is the greatest Grogu. twist of all time? Like like crosshair in the in episode, uh, season three, episode one. Like you see a hand just punch out of his chest. Oh god. And Grogu like pulls himself out. He's like, ah, <laughs> born to the world. That's disgusting. That's so dark. I, I mean, also doesn't make sense because we have flashbacks of Grogu right. during Order 66. <laughs> Who doesn't happen? <laughs> yeah, how did he get it across? So many more questions. <laughs> yeah, he got back in. Um, so Arjuna's <laughs> bold prediction before seeing any of season two was we will get death. Tech is dead. Echo, Echo named a base after him or he is the base. Transformers. <laughs> That's fifty percent. That's pretty good. Yeah, you did call tech way yeah. back before seeing anything. That's true. And then after That's seeing good. the first five episodes, you said Hunter will die by the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> Omega just kept going with the other one. Omega will become the leader in the third season. 
Well, you just had to put another character who died just to well, cover no, your faces. No, no, no. I did that because I thought there would be a leadership change within the batch. Sure. Which you could argue is not going to happen. happen. It's not going to yeah, happen. Yeah, it's still, still Hunter. All right. No. So those are our weird bold predictions, um, you know, looking into season two. Overall, we did pretty terrible. We had some good ones. We had some good yeah, ones. That was like 50%. We, we got We're some like good half. ones. Omega kind being of. captured, Tech's dead, prototype Snoke, you know? Maybe. maybe. <laughs> Wait, what's the prototype Snoke, maybe? Well, we think we there's a shot. We see some bodies in some water. jars. And it could be. Yeah, in that last scene. Yeah. Omega's captured and taken to this cloning facility, hidden cloning facility sure. facility by Voice Hemlock. And uh, yeah. The, so, uh, you know, it's a maybe. <laughs> In terms of like season three bull predictions, Christian, it sounds like you had one. You have one. You, know, you can go first. You go sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure about Take that? It. I can go. Take first. it. I'm yeah. gonna go first. You guys, okay, go ahead. I want to go first here. Okay, so my bull prediction. I won't forget to type this. One. My bull prediction for season three is gonna be: Tech is not dead. <laughs> tech is Bastard. alive, and Tech is gonna be the reason uh, that they're able to get to um, him. Hemlock. Hemlock. Because he didn't die in his fall. He was able to go to the ship and put a tracker up. Very specific. That's good. Wow. Okay. And then my real bull prediction. Wait, that's not your real bull prediction? No, that's just simple. I wrote all that down. <laughs> okay, now, second tab. Second nope, bull prediction. This is the one that I forget. <laughs> it, uh, my second one is going to be <clears throat> we are going to get Grogu in season three. I think there's going to be it, – it's, it's going to happen. I think we're also going to see a young Dr. Um, Pershing. Pershing. Um, and I think Pershing is related to Hemlock. Like either it's his father or his uncle or something, but I think they're related. I it'd, be get- funnier, it'd be funnier if we see Hemlock being born. I mean, not Hemlock, um, Pershing, because then you see his, his birth and his death. <laughs> two different shows would be crazy. Well, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't die. die. He just had his brain fried. Oh, that's true. But yeah. Isn't I mean, that a death of died. sorts? That's it true. is a death. I mean, of his sorts. personality I would is probably argue. gone. <laughs> I mean, they do say like brain dead. That's the. Yeah. That's true. So, so. Yeah. Might be worse. Yeah, than but those are, those are my bold predictions. Nice. And now my third one. Gungi <laughs> will fuse with Grogu. Oh, and shit. Become... And Gungi was in this thing. Oh, you, you skipped through this whole part I had in the outline called Talking Points Season 2. Sure. Whoopsie. <laughs> Maybe that was on purpose. But anyway, Gungi returned. He's alive. He's with the... Uh, he's, with, he's on Kashyyyk. Kashyyyk. Uh, it was a very teary-eyed episode. Yeah, and uh, good for Gungi. I'm, I'm glad he survived. I'm glad that... The rest of those kids are dead. 10% of the <laughs> Jedi Order is clearly still alive. Yeah, you remember the kid episode that was like a backdoor pilot in Clone Wars? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, the rest of them are dead probably. Shh, don't say that. They're on the planet... Um, yeah, no, they're all alive. Igloo planet. And the uh, they're Definitely. gonna f- team up and create the Power Rangers of the New Republic. Sure. Yeah. You don't sound convinced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't sound convinced. <laughs> totally. The Young Rebellion. <gasps> Ooh. Like young, young Rebels. Avengers. Like Young Avengers, but Young Rebels. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> One of the kids well was said. Cal Kestis. Yeah. He'll yeah. he'll lead them. Wait, hold on. Can we uh Let's go back to the the Jedi thing real quick. Can we just count real quick how many Jedi are, li- alive. are alive, specific right now, during the events of okay. Bad Batch season two? Yeah. So we've got Gungi. That's one. Yep. We have Obi Wan Kabuzi. Yep. We have Ahsoka. Yep. Non Kabuzi. Yep. <clears throat> Cal Kestis. Yep. Cal Kestis master. Yep. Whose name I can't remember, and I apologize. Yep. Uh, Kanan, Kanan, Ezra, Ezra. Well, is he? He's not a Jedi yet, though. He's not he's a Jedi not yet, really, yet yeah, so we won't count that. Yet. Okay. Grogu, Grogu, Grogu. Is Grogu a Jedi? Yeah. Yep. Nope. I mean, he was trained in the Jedi. Yeah, he was a Padawan, but exactly. a lot of Padawan. He was a Padawan so maybe yeah, we're he's gonna he's call, we're, I think what we're saying, a Jedi yet. we're still, we're what still, no, Kanan still is Ezra's not because he hasn't, he doesn't have Force abilities at this point. Yeah, his Force yeah, abilities he has, come. He doesn't even. He doesn't even know what Season one of. Rebels, which is post Bad Batch. He's also so most likely uh, he's also a kid. Most likely like four or five right now. Yeah. So Padawans count. Pa- yeah. What count Padawans? If you're force sensitive. Yeah. Well, that could, could be a ton. Yeah. If you've got if you've got Jedi in. training and you've yeah. become a Padawan. How about this yeah. then? I would say that counts. Oh, Yoda. You got those, that, Yoda? those that have held a lightsaber. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, like. 
that are can use the force as well because there are plenty of characters sure, that can yeah. hold a lightsaber that right, don't okay. have the force. So Yoda, so that's eight. Yeah. Who else are we missing? The one who saved Grogu. We don't know if he's well, alive. Well, we don't know if he's alive at right, this point. Right, because we know he, he was alive be. right as, as Order 66 Wait, was be. happening. Because this yeah. is during Order 66. This no, is, this, this is a couple two, years after, year, this after is, that. This is way after that. Oh, uh, well. Yeah. He could die He could die like the next day. Yeah. After he's he he's assumed to be alive. Because Not necessarily. Yeah. We don't know the rest of what happens. You haven't seen him dead. The whole rule is if you don't see him die, you just made this argument for tech. That's true, but I just said you can't say it either way. But there's nothing to say that he's alive either. Well, because he we're hasn't saying died characters yet. that are definitive. Technically, if that's the case, then Larry, we'd have to say Mace Windu is still alive. Yeah, yeah we never technically saw him. Technically, he is still alive. Um, okay, I would argue that I've been I've been saying that for I don't know how many years, but twenty. They years. keep ignoring my requests. Wait, when did uh, Revenge of this? Is it oh three? Oh five. Oh five. Also, two more years. Twenty year. Twenty years. Oh, you, you got a prediction yet? there, Ravi, for that? Mace no. Windu will return. Do you know as something, Ravi? Nick Fury. Um, Samuel L. Jackson is going to be holding a convention about convention, himself. and it's called the Mace Windu Lives Convention. The Samuel Con, yes, Windu Sammy Con, Con. Windu Con, Windu Con. Oh, Windu Con. 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 Windu Con. So I guess it's like eight. Mace Windu. Yeah, it's like eight at the time of when this. Uh, Are we counting Dark Side users too? No, they're stupid. Okay, because there's all the Inquisitors. <laughs> I mean, all ten of them are technically. Hey, isn't the bro- right now? brother a good? Good Jedi now, the brother, the fifth brother or whatever, the one with the funky hat, the funky hat brother. Oh, at this time, well, the Obi Wan, yeah, he was in Obi Wan, and then at some point, either before or after that, he becomes good. He was good. Oh yeah, wouldn't good. you also like to go back to other points? Wouldn't you have to then also say like going back to the Inquisitors because they're all Jedi turned, and if this been a year or two, I would imagine yeah, they Reva. didn't turn just that quickly. So. Ten Jedi's right there, essentially, are running yeah. around. Yeah, definitely Reva. Reva's, yeah. So Reva's in that ten as well. Yeah. There's a lot of fucking Jedi. Yeah, I mean, and there's were, a lot of future Jedi running around. The too. one that gets caught up in the Obi Wan, Reva. No, the one that they hang. Oh yeah, yeah. Because oh yeah. yeah, Who do he's they hang in Tatooine? Yeah, they hang a. Yeah. Oh, that guy was a Jedi. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, he recognizes Obi Wan. He's like, "You can protect me." And he's like, no, and "They hang him." And they hang him. He's like, "Well, I'm gonna go eat my sashimi now." Yeah. Well, so I mean, put it this way, right? That's so there were ten thousand Jedi right. before Order sixty six. So that could be like fifty running around. That's still like a. It's a good number. Percentage. Yeah. How effective do we think Order sixty six was? Like, do we think they got all ten thousand? Do we think they only got like five thousand? Well, we know for a fact they well, didn't we know get all of them. Yeah. So it wasn't. Effective. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, but like, do you think it was like ninety nine percent, or do you think it was like eighty percent? Well, it depends on who you ask. If you're the imperial media, so if we go right. by you're Michael, saying 100%. so Michael, so my, as we were just talking with Michael, right? Right. You, they're not dead unless you see them. So in Wrench of the Sith, when they do the montage, how many Jedi do we see gunned down? Six. Six. So 9,994 <laughs> Jedi are still alive. The kids yeah, we never see true. die. That's right. The no, that's hit. true. Those kids didn't, we didn't see them We just dead. saw the lightsaber ignited, and then we saw Anakin walking in a different direction a little bit later. As Dennis Reynolds says, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, all it means about nothing. the implication. Yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah, it means oh nothing. Oh my god! All right, yeah, let's get back into. He vocal. cut off the he cut off their hair and he made them graduate. That's yeah, D- there it is. <laughs> he, yeah. He's like, you guys are all Jedi Knights now. It's like when they bring <laughs> out the knife and you're like, you're gonna kill me, and then they just cut the exactly. restraints. That's all he did. He's Anakin's just, a good guy. Darth Vader, good guy. Luke showed us Anakin's yeah. a good guy at the end of yeah. Return of the Jedi. Book of Boba. You want to know why Obi Wan survived? Because he didn't want to kill his old master. <laughs> All right, Christian, bring it back. <laughs> what is your bold prediction for season three? <laughs> this has gone on oh, long enough. Wow. <laughs> I think uh, they're going to do the switcheroo. So I'm going to take a little bit of Ravi's, who stole mine, let's be honest. I didn't steal yours. So Tech is alive. Whoa, you but stole mine. Crosshair will die by the end of season three. I think so. It's going to be a little switcheroo. So Ooh. we're expected at this point that Tech is dead and Crosshead's coming back into the fold. I think Crosshead gets a full redemption arc. I think he helps Omega escape. Um, and, you know, maybe with this scientist sister clone, um, they learn some things. I know that sounds weird. So but that's where she is. That's where she is. It's like, and, uh, uh, you remember that, uh, was it uh, Disney Kids or Sister Sister? 
Sister, sister. Uh, sister Cloud. <laughs> sister Cloud. I don't know what you are. That's and, uh, so, so yeah, clone. I think. <laughs> there you go. I, oh, boy. I uh, I think, yeah. and But, but Crosshair is going to make the ultimate sacrifice to complete his redemption arc. I think it would be a little too strange if you bring him back all the way into the fold and he's like, all right, guys, let's have adventures. Like nothing ever happened. I think that's too far for a kid show. I think he, he has to, he can get the full redemption, but he doesn't get to live. <laughs> Damn. Jesus, dark. Yeah. That, so what, what is, what's the message there to kids? You're, don't you know, you don't betray your brothers in the first place. Before you <laughs> yeah. get the what did he do wrong? Was it a death deathable offense? No, he betrayed them. Like he. Well, he's also killed, but he's also killed innocent people. Like Has he killed one. clones yes. or just stunned. Clones? Oh yeah, he's he's killed everyone. He's killed so civilians, he do this. clones, uh, imperial officers. Yeah. Uh, Innocent people, children, like, yeah, he's not a great Well, then, guy. yeah, he has to die. Yeah. He can't have a redemption arc if he doesn't die. I mean, he killed that officer, though, in, like, was that episode 13 or mm -hmm. 14? And I gotta be honest, I paused, I stood up, <laughs> I clapped. I mean, that <laughs> officer, wow. that officer was a dick. So. He was a complete dick. <laughs> yeah. But he doesn't. He was so happy when that guy got killed. He doesn't abide by the kill Troopers don't kill clones. Yeah. No, he just he, kills everyone because he's a hired guy. He's gun. a good soldier. Is he a, yeah, yeah, he, 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 yeah. His, yeah. his credence has been good, good soldiers. soldiers follow orders, no matter what those orders are. Right. But we did, there is an, I mean, his arc of the season, though, is he also sees the. Oh, he the breaks issues bad. With that. And he breaks it. And he's like. From that, yeah. Yeah. And he's just like, this is ridiculous. I mean, how heartbreaking is that? That, like, those clones on that snow planet were just protecting the armor of their replacements. And like all died because of it. It, I mean, it makes it, make, it makes sense. That it that's sucks. It sucks. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was heartbreaking, life. but very poetic. Yeah, that was that was maybe my favorite episode. Ooh, Not the clone arc. It was a great one. The clone arc was really good, like as a collective story. But in terms of individual episode, that might have been the cross. Every the, the solo you know, crosshair episodes were just fantastic. yeah. Just just go ahead and say it. But every single crosshair episode was an absolute banger. All two of them. <laughs> that was like there's four. Three. Two. I think that was four, which we'll get into <laughs> when we go into qualifiers, because it's very true. important for my qualifier. Uh oh, before we get there, though, Juno, your bold prediction for season three. Okay, so Dead we air. will learn in season three that the Snoke humanoid clone bodies are actually clone trooper bodies that have been utilized and been recloned, and they've tried to use genetic force code and DNA from Grogu to add that in, prepping this to be like a Palpatine type body. So uh, as uh, our friend Jimmy Simpson, who plays Royce Hemlock said, we're utilizing these clones. What are they utilizing them for, right? They're trying to use, they're trying to fulfill Palpatine's types of wishes. And because this is already cloned genetic people, they're going to utilize them as dummies to like, can we clone in force, the force? Into, it's called, it's uh, midichlorians. Can we put midichlorians? <laughs> Thank you. Can we put that, can we put that into a, clo body. a cloned body? Right. right. Or can you clone midichlorians? Yeah, and really? we've always wondered, like, why are these, like, Snoke people, like, deformed, right? You think it's, so you think it's like a madhouse of, like, body parts thrown together? No, not a madhouse. Like, I uh, think, like, the stress that the, they're putting these bodies under, like, sure. Deform them essentially, and that those are the Snoke bodies. So the the clone army are the Snoke bodies. Damn, that's my bold prediction. That's weird and gross. But also, we've already seen it with like Echo, like being these clones getting deformed. Yep. Sure. Uh, so and you, you look at Echo; he's a emaciated, pale motherfucker who's part mostly cyborg at this point. So, and it feeds into the themes that they're talking about, right? The clones being treated as these like second class, second property. class, and it's actually scary property. if you think about that, right? Because we know, we know the Snoke stuff happens, we know this Palpatine stuff happens. It also makes you wonder, like Hunter and and Wrecker and Echo, are like we're gonna go save Omega, but like, do they? <laughs> because like, the shit works in the end, right? Like it all does happen. Um, and it's like, oh, I mean, the empire is going to get what the empire wants. It's true. Yeah. 
Jeez. At least for the next 30, That's 40, 50 That's your grossest, years. most disturbing take yet. That's what the batch in Bad Batch stands for. <laughs> there <laughs> you go. The <laughs> They're the Snoke, Snoke Batch. Yep. The Snoke Batch. We're Team oh, Snoke Force. <laughs> Imagine if that's how the show ends. That would be The depressing. entire Bad Batch are just Snoke bodies. Or maybe they're the Knights of Ren. Still Whoa, don't know who the hell they are. Are they running around the galaxy right now? No, because they are uh, Ben's like buddies, right? Or yeah. How old are they? I mean, I would imagine they're the same age as him. Supposedly Ben's age. Maybe not, though. The implication is that they're fellow students at Luke Skywalker's Skywalker School for the Gifted. <laughs> Skywalker Academy. <laughs> the Rock mutants. School. Cyclops. Wolverine. Before we get into the big question here of was it good, we had to write down what needed to happen in season two in order for us to say yes. Season two of Bad Batch was good. So let's run through this real quick. Start with everyone's favorite, Arjuna. Woo. Arjuna's qualifier was <clears throat> see more characters that are new and cool or add dimensions to existing characters. So that's a very loosey goosey thing. <laughs> yeah, what you have to, it's like it's your own personal interpretation. So I guess the question is, did that happen? For yeah, you? I feel like it did. Like I thought the villain at the end, you know, with Royce was interesting. I thought you got some more clone troopers and reintroduced to some existing characters. That I think added some context. Um, as well. So I, I will say yes. My qualifier was fulfilled. Very nice. Your wish was fulfilled. Christian's was Crosshairs needs to be a key part of the season. It needs to be in at least four episodes and the focus. So uh, I think like two thirds of that uh, qualifier came true. He was in at least four episodes, but he wasn't necessarily the focus toward, of those episodes toward the end. Um, he, he'll, so he was, he definitely appeared in more than four episodes. Um, I will say the episodes that he was the focus specifically, uh, that one was the episode two or three, three, I think. Three. Um, and when he's working with Rex, Cody, uh, Cody, sorry. Yep. Um, and then the, the one where he's on the ice planet, which is probably the best, like our junior said, I think it's probably the best episode of the season. Um, those were, uh, those were two the best. Those were the two best episodes, I think, of the season. That being said, though, the reason the season worked was because everything else outside of Crosshair was actually, I thought, for the most part, pretty strong. So yeah, it um, all ties together nicely too. Yeah, yeah. and also I, I thought I really did think it was a more cohesive season than season one. Season one was like the introductory stuff, and right. I thought, if I'm being honest, I think season one had actually more filler than season two. Season two, at least, every few episodes was a very important, pivotal episode, I thought. Or at least a good, interesting episode. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it was good, but not necessarily because of Crosshair, but Crosshair was still the best part. <laughs> so, it's <was> like... <laughs> gotcha. A little bit of yes and no. My qualifier was more world building, Republic Army transition to Empire. Which we definitely got. Oh, the second right. one. That second one definitely happened. 100%. Yeah, I mean I mean we did get more world building too with the Senate and what's happening. And then also even some Moff's of the secret planet. Moff's secret planet. But then also the rando not rando episodes, but the episodes where, you know, when they're on the mining planet and we we're seeing what's happening with the power vacuum. Um, or the people on Pabu. Pabu. And and trying to like run away from the Empire and, you know, create a community and all that stuff. So like, yeah, it definitely hit on both those things, I think, this season. Nice. All right. We're going to make our father proud. Krishna. (laughs) (laughs) Kidding. Arjuna was, I was supposed to say Attack on Titan. Arjuna (laughs) was Bad Batch season two good. Yes, it was good. Uh, It was. It was really good. I thought the finale really tied it together. They really nailed it. Um and I, I liked it, and then I really liked it. I think the finale, being able to tie everything um, and bring the elements kind of together um, was was powerful. And I'm, I'm very excited for season three. I'm, like, actually now upset that I have to wait in terms of, like, what happens next with this story. Uh, and I, it's not, I have, I'm not saying I haven't enjoyed The Mandalorian mm-hmm. season three, but I think, like, I'm wanting more of Bad Batch right now than like Mandalorian if I had to rank it. Oh wow. Yeah. That's that's surprising to me. Yeah. 
Crazy. Krishna, was The Bad Batch season two good? Yes, it was. It was great. Um, yeah, on, uh, uh, all the reasons you said, like those, the last two episodes, best cinematography of the show. Uh, I thought after those first four or five episodes, which was the slow kind of rocky yeah. start, I think as right after that, I think it like episode six, I was like, oh, this is infinitely better. I don't know, you know, I, I don't know if I was just in a good mood and it just kept getting better. Uh, and then, yeah, the, the last three episodes were really good. I kind of batched those up uh, today, actually, before this pod. And uh, but yeah, really good. Batched um, those up. I batched the batch. Raffi. Was season two of The Bad Batch good? No. It was good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sound confused there. No, yes, it was good. I, I said it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. Yes, it was good. It was very good. If the epi- these two episodes didn't end the way uh, they ended and, and they were going to do more of the traditional we go in blow everything up, save crosshairs, I would probably be like, no, this is not good. It's because they lost. And our toward June's point, they episode five did, I think is why it's a good I, I did like the subversion of expectation, right? Because that's exactly like coming off of episode 14 before the, like last week's episode, you're like, okay, they're going to go in and get the plans. They're going to go in they save crosshair and everything will be good. And like none of that happens. And, even episode fi- the first episode ends with on a cliffhanger with them like dangling off the thing. So you're like, all right, they're gonna get away, and get to the planet. They're gonna save Crosshair. I and mean, none of that happens. And like, I and it just time, kept getting worse. It just kept going back, like down, <laughs> down, down. And I was just like, oh, okay, like, I'm nice. shocked. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice yeah. surprise yeah. for sure. Yeah. It reminded me of I think season two or season three, the uh, finale of Rebels when they do their initial attack on Lethal. Yeah. And they try to take out the like smaller uh, garrison that's there. I think this is before Thrawn comes and takes control of the planet. Yeah, and they lose. They just spectacularly lose yeah. and have to retreat. And it's like it's terrible. Uh, this definitely reminded me of that. Uh, that obviously was a larger scale than this, but still, still really well, good. So. Yeah. And the fact that they, you know, they they took Tech out and didn't bring him back. You know, at least in this season, right? Yeah. You know, implying that he's. Dead, maybe. Uh, yeah, powerful stuff. It's like, ooh. Fine. And the, the batch is completely split, mm-hmm. splintered and broken. And Also, it's the first time we've seen Hunter. It's kind of important for Hunter as well. This is the first time we've seen him commit to something. And he spent much of the... He's the leader of the Bad Batch. He spent most of these first two seasons kind of waffling. Like, I got to keep people safe. We don't want to commit to Rex's mission. We don't want to get involved with too much stuff. We just want to make money and keep ourselves Staying safe. Staying under the radar, right. And this this episode, the end of it, he's like, "We're gonna go get Omega," and he basically said, "We're gonna tear this universe apart until we, we get, get her. her back." Right. And I was like, "Oh, what, I, it's we, like he, he's, he's Ramboing it." We didn't we didn't discuss this, but I did find it interesting that like after they lose Tech, him and Wrecker are both ready to like kind of just okay, well, we can't find Crosshair, and that's kind of it, right? They're ready to like pack it up. They really packed it up, uh, and Hunter was even kind of like the most resistant to the idea. He's like. Do we need to do this? He's Pabu. like, he's just like, we could stay here. He's like, they were at a tactical disadvantage. Wrecker and Tech and Omega are all like, no, we should. Like, he's our brother. We got to right. do this. And then he kind of gives in. But as soon as Tech dies and Omega gets really hurt, he's like, nope, we're we're gonna retire. Right, because like, he's kind he's of ta- he's all tactical, right? And, yeah. and he was right. And he's very paternal. Yeah. yeah. Like he's so he's thinking like, Omega's. N- like needs a regular, some kind of semblance of a regular yeah. childhood. Right. Yeah. Now that she's gone, you, you you wonder what sort of, what kind of abilities that's going to unleash in him. Because you feel like perhaps if we've only gotten, uh, a, not like a watered down version of Hunter. Like he hasn't maybe been allowed to, uh, perform to his full capabilities. If you think about like the battles, how they how they go, right. Tech is doing all the tech stuff. Wrecker's doing all the tank stuff. Um, Hunter kind of leads, but he doesn't take the forefront in the battles very often. So you wonder if season three is going to be his time to shine. It's going to edge for dark side at season three of Rebels. Could be. Why not? Fuck yeah. 
Let's do it. Use that un- ready for unlimited it. power. Full Rambo. He's going full Rambo. Full Ezra. <laughs> I wonder if uh, Celeste Stallone watches this show. I mean, hey, Hunter is <laughs> Rambo. Let's be honest. It's like, yeah, no, def- I mean, definitely. That's like they look no, exactly the same. No question there. What? <laughs> so, yeah. no. Let's do it. No, um, Dave Filoni found a picture of uh, Tamora Morrison when he was in high school out trick or treating. And he happened to be Rambo, and that's where the idea was born. Or he's Charlie Sheen from Hot Shots. Oh, mm. are they? Or that? Charlie that Sheen. Too. Charlie Sheen. Or Hot Shots Part Two. <laughs> anyway, that's going to do it for us here on the podcast. As always, thank you for tuning in and listening and joining us on this quest of discovering if Bad Batch Season 2 was good. You can find us on the socials, which is on www.internet.com. Such as Twitter at Was It Good and Instagram and TikTok at Was It Good Pod. Our full podcast and cut downs are on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash was it good. Check out our website, was it good.info. Our June is going to be updating it shortly with amazing blogs. Wow. I know. Me specifically. Wow. Yeah, this is news to him. Wow. <laughs> and finally, our next pod is going to be later this week on everyone's favorite film, Dungeons and Dragons. Honor among thieves. Starring a dragon that came to life. <laughs> And an owl bear. I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, you're gonna find out. Yeah, you're about to learn. Yeah. Book learning. And we are wasn't good. <laughs> Goodbye. Nailed it. <laughs>